what's up guys before i get started with the deck profile i just want to make kind of a quick announcement i originally was going to make a white blue black version of shion's deck but uh in comparison to the one i made my friend uh with the one i said that me and him top two with at the most recent local tournament i had uh with when i was using kaguya and he was using shion uh those two lists are extremely similar and that's actually going to be what this list is I tried to make the blue, white, black one, but in comparison, it just doesn't seem as strong. And I feel really guilty when it comes to water to not put out something as strong as it could be because water is always going to have Cheshire Cats, and I don't feel comfortable putting out a list just to be creative, but not having it be the best list I think I can offer when people might go out of their way to go buy that list, and if they buy the Cheshires and all the other cards, it just might end up being really expensive, but not reflect what the deck can really do. So I couldn't get myself to do that just for the sake of being creative and just for particularly giving you guys something different from what I've posted before. So I actually decided just to go with the original list I had given him, which is a few tweaks that we noticed worked better um, after the tournament. Uh, so this list itself is actually going to be extremely close to the Kaguya list. And when I mean it, like really close, I mean like there's like 10 different cards. So in its own way, uh, this deck is very close to the Alice World deck that I mentioned that Adam Reiser had uh, used and given out to his friends uh, that kept winning those AGPs. So it is going to be really similar. So if that's something you guys aren't interested in, uh, I feel really bad uh, that I wasn't able to give you anything else. But I don't want anyone to invest money into the deck if it's not going to be the best version of the deck I think it can be. So um, this, this version of the deck does, however, have like... A whole different kind of curve to it because it does focus a little more on the ruler itself because normally with Kaguya she makes the mana base very perfect but with Shion uh, you do use her regalia quite often and you also do stack the top of your deck for her enter effect uh, which I can get into later too. Um, this deck is more shut your opponent down with um, Arthur the Pendragon uh, so the the white Arthur um, opposed to just beating down with Gwybers, however, it does still have all the Gwybers to push for damage. Uh, it's just kind of a different curve. You set up your board a little differently. It's still quite similar, but uh, it's not 100% the same, I guess you can say. I'm actually also starting to slightly like this version of the deck a little bit more than the Kaguya one, uh, just because uh, the Kaguya one feels a little more consistent, but I like having the body from Arthur because I've, I've always been a really fan of like the Knight of the Round Table story. So um, not only do I like seeing the Arthur in this deck, but I like that the ruler has kind of a more beefy body. Uh, it's not that the deck is particularly better than Kaguya. I think they're both uh, pretty evenly matched. I just like the way this deck plays a little bit more than the other one just because of my personal playstyle. So if, you, if you're really enjoying the Kaguya deck, uh, more power to you, you can keep playing that. I might even keep still playing that because my friend's already playing this and like I wouldn't like have any regrets or anything, but uh, this deck is a lot of fun to play. So sorry for kind of like the longer intro, but um, I just wanted to get that out there because I didn't want anyone to think I'm like purposely uh, pushing one idea or anything. I just really don't want anyone to invest money in something unless they're going to get the best of it. And um, this is truly what I think the best uh, kind of shy on list could be. I'm not in no particular way saying mine is the best. I'm just saying from what I've thought of, uh, this seems to be the most consistent. So uh, starting off with uh, Shion herself, we have Songstress of Shangri-La. Her judgment cost is one blue and two colorless, and her continuous effect is you may look at the top card of your main deck at any time. This is, of course, Shion's like, little gimmick, I guess you could say, but it's not really a gimmick because it works extremely well, especially in this kind of list. Um, so her ruler set is just really simple, but it is absolutely beautiful. I think the art is really, really nice. And um, on her J ruler side, it says, uh, let me see if I can get this a little clear. So you may look at the top card of your main deck at any time. Of course, we've seen that this is a recurring thing with her right now. And then when this card enters your field, reveal the top card of your main deck. If it's a resonator with total cost five or less, put it into your field. Otherwise, put it into your hand. So you either essentially draw one or you put the monster into the field. Um, this is mainly used with Arthur Pendragon. I stack it on top of the deck using her regalia and then you summon it uh, after you deactivate um, so it's into the field. Uh, the reason why I said that I think this version of the deck just works so much better is because not only is Morgiana constantly putting cards in the bottom of your deck, and so you can kind of control what goes on the top and bottom using her regalia and Morgiana kind of together, but um, if you're going to be summoning Arthur 
it really helps to have protection and with the way I was using refuge in the other Alice world, the Kaguya world list, it just protects Arthur even more and that card is a complete powerhouse if it stays on the field. It just doesn't let your opponent have any field presence so it's ridiculous and it works really well with Muse, uh, which is also something Shana can take advantage of that Kaguya can't. And then her god art is to pay 2 blue, which is also an extremely small cost for a god art. I think that's like really easy uh, kind of to pay. And it's to gain um, plus 5, plus 5 until end of turn. So she, uh, this card gains plus 5, plus 5 until end of turn, making her a 14, 15. And then um, this deals damage equal to her attack to another target J slash resonator. So um, a lot of people have been comparing this to Duel of Truth. And I actually thought it was like Duel of Truth as well because I thought it forced them to like battle each other. But it specifically only does damage from this card to the other target, which is even better because you have no risk of Shine dying kind of in the, in the extra damage or whatever you do from Duel of Truth typically. Uh, this card essentially just kills uh, Primogenitor, it can kill Kaguya, it can kill a Gwyber, it can just kill so much that's in the meta right now that the fact that you're getting like a free Arthur off of this, a 9-10 beat stick that's like not small by any means anyway, and then on top of that you also get uh, something that can like clear the board or swing for a lot of damage too because you can always swing. If they declare block, you just got out the blocker and then her for now 1400 attack just goes straight through to the opponent which is really big. I think that... Um, she just offers so much and I'm, I'm actually starting to see that like I think people are catching up on how good she is and not that like um, I didn't particularly ever think she was bad by any means it just didn't seem like she was the one that was going to stick out to me the most and I'm starting to really really like the way she plays so um, I just I really like this ruler all the rulers in the set just feel, seem like really well made so for the stone lineup it also differs from Kaguya because she can't take advantage of all the moon as much I have uh, 4 magic, wo uh, magic Stone of Deep Wood. This is the stone that produces blue-green for anyone that doesn't know. I just have the alternative art version. Um, I didn't want anyone to get confused, but I like using these because I have them, so I might as well. Uh, this is just because blue is the most important color in the deck, of course. Uh, Cheshire Cat in early game is really important. Everything else you can also set up. Um, there's also a reason why I run 4 of these and not 4 Moon Shades, but I'll get into that later. And then uh, 3 Magic Stone of Gusting Skies. Uh, white's the next most important color. I didn't want to go with four of these because I was afraid I'd hit too many of them and not see blue as early as I wish I could. So I decided just to go with three and then three moon shades. Um, I didn't mind. Normally, a lot of people play like four, four, two, but I really wanted the blue early on, like I said. It also, um, I'm not too worried about using moon shade this format because not only does it seem like every deck happens to be using moon shades, so like everyone's kind of equally paying life, so it kind of evens out, but I'm not too worried about the rush matchup because. Arthur completely shuts down red. Like if I summon Arthur, they don't really have any removal for it. And then if they're like attacking with their land slots and stuff into my Arthur, especially if I have Muse, that's like totally fine and they're gonna die. So I feel safe not really having a lot of like healing or anything like that. Cause I don't like Foment of the World Tree. I think I have like one in here, but um, I, I just felt as though with Arthur in this deck and that kind of being the main uh, play that you wanna be making, like to shut down your opponent, I didn't think the paying life with Moonshade would be too risky. So. Um, I'm running three just for the extra blue. For the Resonators, I have three Elvish Priests. Uh, like I mentioned in the Kaguya and the Primogenitor video, uh, I had four Moonbreeze Elves in that, but I, I mentioned how in Primogenitor you can uh, discard the extra Moonbreeze Elf for Pitch Black Moon, and in Kaguya you can use it for her God Art or um, her Jactivate and everything, so I was okay with having it. But in this deck, because I wanted to keep it as consistent as I can, I was okay with just having three Elvish Priests opposed to four. I really don't want to see them mid-game or have to use the Regalia to stack it uh, on the bottom. Like, let's say if I check the top card and I see I have an Elvish Priest coming up, because on the off chance you do play against the Primogenitor list, uh, you're going to have to pay to put the card on the bottom. And if you don't have it open, you're drawing just a not live card. So I was okay with just having three. Um, why I think Elvish Priest is actually kind of really ridiculous in this deck too is because Shion's Jactivate cost was 1 blue and 2 colorless and on turn 3, if you had 1 open the turn prior and you stack Arthur and then, well after you draw anyway, uh, so you draw, stack Arthur and then just pay the 2 stones you already have in Elvish Priest to Jactivate and put Arthur into the field, that's a really quick Arthur and even if your opponent can like get rid of it even if they can somehow get rid of Arthur and Shion on their next turn by using like their entire hand somehow or just using like every resource they have to kill both of them, 
you can now safely like next turn just tap for a stone even though you can't even check your top your top card of your deck anymore you can just tap for a stone and do something like a cheshire green cat and uh Gwyber or something knowing that your opponent had to exhaust every single resource to get over shion and arthur and in a situation where they don't you literally have like a 9 10 ruler and uh an arthur that's 12 12 and does so much so um i i really like uh what elvish priest does for this deck and then for Cheshire Cat, um, like I mentioned, this is the main reason why I wanted to go with this version for the deck. If you're going to be paying so much for a card, I think you should have the best version of the deck for it. Uh, Cheshire Cat is a staple in most blue decks, let alone any off blue, any deck, any deck that has off blue in it. So this card is just a must have. Um, for anyone who can't afford it, uh, there really isn't any replacement. I feel really bad when people ask me, you know, what can I put instead of Cheshire Cat? Because I really don't know what to say. Uh, especially in these kind of decks where thinning through the deck immediately is more important than just the actual draw itself. Like, uh, Alice's Little Scout is a really good card. When it's destroyed, you get to draw a card. But in comparison to Cheshire, it just wouldn't do for this deck what Cheshire does. And I, I don't really think that there's any replacements out there. And I, I really do my best to try to invest into having these because they're just really, really important. And then for Familiar of Holy Wind, uh, same as the Kaguya deck, you want to get to your Gwybers as fast as you can. Uh, I didn't want to rely just on Arthur, so I felt as though having the Gwybers also really helps. If they're wasting their resources also on Gwyber, it means they have less resource for Arthur. So it's kind of just like they're in a way protecting each other. And I like the way that the deck can just go through everything and control what you're drawing with the Regalia. I just think it's really, really good. In a way, uh, Shion kind of feels like a mini Reflect. It's like you give up your consistency, like the amount of consistency that Reflect has anyway. You give that up for having an Arthur and like a kind of medium bodied ruler. And that's kind of a trade I'm willing to make because I feel like it's harder to side against. Um, with Reflect nowadays, if somehow, um, excuse me, if Primal Generator does get to be more popular, uh, that deck really does shut down Reflect quite easily. And it doesn't do as much to this deck. Even when I was having to pay the Regalia cost against the Primogenitor matchup, it still didn't feel like nearly that bad. It was like a fair matchup, but I didn't feel as though like I was being completely shut down. Whereas every time I play Reflect against the Gilapis deck, I kind of get really annoyed because I'm like, he can negate my search and that's not fun. So um, I really think that uh, she's going to kind of replace Reflect in a way, not, not in terms of being as good, just um, being able to play the decks you typically would play with Reflect because the Regalia fixes a lot of the issues those combo decks had. And then 3 Morgania. Um, this card is actually like the most insane card ever. I used to hate this card because I would always play it at like 4 and I just didn't like it. But with Foment of the World Tree, this card is absolutely insane. It fixes your hand every single time. With Cheshire and Familiar, it fixes your hand every single time. Another actually really cool interaction between this and Shion that you don't get from um from kaguya is that shion's regalia says if you have one on the field already its activate effect is to discard another copy of itself to draw a card and that could trigger morgania too so at any point if you have the regalia on the field and you get another one in your hand you can just use it to set off morgania which is what reflected using um the uh draw one and put one on the bottom effect that he he had so that's kind of what i mean when i say that she's kind of like a mini reflect she just does so much for this deck that reflected that I really like in the trade-off to get an Arthur and a body too. I just think it's really, really good. Um, the only thing to note with Morgiana though is um, something I guess I should mention with uh, Shion. If you use Morgiana to check the top three cards of your deck in an instance of a draw, you can't use Shion to then check the fourth card because uh, Morgiana specifically says like, you look at the top three, so technically the top card of your deck is still the same as the first one from those three. It doesn't allow you to look at like the fourth card, even though the card says you may look at the top card of your deck anytime. Uh, the top card of your deck technically is the first one Morgiana is checking because she's just looking. So um, it's not, it's not, you won't be able to check the fourth card. However, if you summon like a Cheshire Cat and you draw two cards, you could potentially look at the third card. And um, it doesn't really change anything because you're going to still stack one on top. But you could potentially, if you're drawing cards, you could look at the next card, even though you're in the middle of like a non-resolved uh, effect. But if you're checking the top cards of your deck or looking at the top cards of your deck, it doesn't change what the actual top card of your deck is. So you can't look further than what the card allows you. So uh, that's something that I think is really important to note. And then two Muse. I originally had three of these, but it kind of felt too cloggy. Um, this card is really good in general, but I think it's getting a little too overhyped. Its price jumped up to like $10 for the full art when 
Originally at core, I think we were selling them for like five or four. And um, I think it's mainly the hype. So if you want to hold off on buying a, like a higher rarity of this card, I think you'd be safe too because I'm pretty sure it's going to drop. It's not a bad card by any means. I just don't think it's worth $10 when like Persia I think is like the craziest card ever. And she's worth like 12 So if you guys, um, just for anyone that's out there that's like looking to buy cards, uh, this is one of the more expensive ones that you can probably hold off on if you want just like the common version or anything. But uh, I just thought I'd mention that because for some reason this card's getting like a lot of hype and it's a great card. It's just um, I don't think it's like a four of in every Shion deck and it like fixes everything or anything like that. It's just a good card, which is, you know, it's great, but, uh, you know, just maybe a little overhyped. But uh, what Muse does is when this card enters the field, you call the top card of your deck and if you can call it right, you add it to your hand. So you would say like, it's a, is it a resonator? Is it a spell? Is it a, you know, just whatever the type of the card is, you call that and it gets added to your hand. Um, note that this isn't draw, it just gets added to your hand, so it will not set off Morgiana. And um, you can obviously check the top card of your deck, so you're never going to miss with this, unless Shion is dead. In which case, remember, you can't check the top card of your deck if she dies. And then um, the second uh, continuous effect on this card is, if a resonator you control would be dealt damage less than its defense, you prevent it. Uh, so why this works so good with Arthur is if you summon this and, they have, and you have Arthur, and their force is swing with their whole field into your Arthur, even if you somehow had attacked or you didn't even use the plus 8 pump on himself and he's just a 12-12, he won't die if he's taking damage less than 12 and every single creature your opponent attacks into it with will die. And if you're going against something like a mirror match and they have like Gwybers, you just pump it to the 2000 defense and then the Gwybers 1200s are doing nothing either and they're just dying every time they crash in. So um, Muse works really good with Arthur. But I didn't want to see it particularly before Arthur, so typically I like setting Arthur up first uh, with maybe like a field spell to protect it, and then I play this afterwards and just kind of control the board. Uh, one Hera. I In this deck particularly, because I can grab Hera whenever I want, I liked having it just at one. Uh, I have more sided, I side two more because Hera is just amazing in a deck where it works really well. But I didn't want to kind of ruin the consistency in this version of it because I could just search it. In Kaguya, I liked having just more of it because... I can't particularly grab it whenever I want, so it was okay with it. But in this deck, you can't, so it wasn't as big of a deal to run more. And then Speaker of Creation, uh, it's mainly here just to grab Barrier of Shadows and win Secluded Refuge. Uh, it's search in addition when it enters the field. You can also destroy additions with it, so it's really good to destroy stuff like Barrier of Shadows, which slows Shion down, and uh, destroy other people's like Realm of Pure Spirits or uh, Pitch Black Moon or another win Secluded Refuge if your opponent's playing it. And then uh, 4 Adam Broly. Uh, this is very uh, self-explanatory. This card is insane in Alice World. You uh, tribute a green and a blue, and you get to draw a card, and then uh, float a mana, and then play the card. So in an instance, if you draw into a Gwyber, you just float the one and play him for one, if you've met the requirement for Gwyber. Uh, something I should note is, in my previous video, I kind of mentioned the effect on this card a little incorrectly. So the effects resolve from top to bottom. I said that you can originally choose which card goes into the chase and resolves differently. Um, so you would like put everything in a chase the order you wanted to and then it resolves backwards But that's actually incorrect. So I'm sorry about that. It gets resolved from top to bottom So you would always heal first then uh, burn then draw a card then produce color and then your opponent would lose life but um It doesn't change the way the card works because the draw effect is always before the mana And I don't know why you would ever want to float the mana before you draw anyway because what I, what I didn't realize that they were uh, the draw was first and the green was second on the card so that's why I mentioned that you can put it in the chase in any way, because I thought like you had to do it a specific way to get that effect. But it doesn't matter anymore because the blue effect is always before the green effect anyway. So you're always going to draw before you uh, produce the mana. So uh, it's totally fine. It, it works the same way I thought it worked. It's just it's your force to have it work that way. So um, you always draw and then produce mana afterwards. And then four Gwybers. Um, I was going to run three because I had the Arthur, but I wanted to see it on the off chance someone's prepared for Arthur. Uh, all my decks so far have had like almost one Bedivere mained in it or I side them. And on the off chance, um, people aren't so shocked to see the Arthur. I still wanted to have a different win condition, so I liked having the four Gwybers. Uh, four doesn't really clog up too much in this deck because it doesn't clog up in Kaguya either. But I just, I don't think three is worth playing. Uh, the fourth one really does put in a lot of work. So I just thought I'd just go go safe and play four. And then of course, the, you know, the main king of the deck, we have Arthur. Uh, so anyone that hasn't been catching up on what I've been saying so far, um, Arthur is a five drop. So this is how you put it into the field using Shion's Enter. 
and his continuous effect is this card cannot be targeted by fire or darkness spells or abilities so you can't like stoning to death it or space time collapse or uh hazard carmilla faria uh, anything that targets that a black or red card just doesn't work and uh his uh, your opponent must attack into this card if able so if he's rested your opponent has to attack into it uh the way that works is your opponent is allowed to go through their just their entire churn the way they normally would as long as at some point they do attack into Arthur. They don't just have to like recover and then like straight up right away just attack into Arthur. That's not the case. Uh, it's just sometime within their churn they have to attack into it. They can't end their churn without attacking into Arthur. Um, of course, anything that doesn't have uh, swiftness, like if they just play the card, that card will not have to attack into Arthur because it can't uh, due to summoning sickness. But let's say your opponent has uh, four Gwybers and no cards in hand and you have muse and arthur and then your opponent draws for churn and you tap arthur in response to their draw and give it uh, 800 defense and the card your opponent drew was like a stoning let's say um they're forced to now since they you know they can't do anything they only have four guybers and a stoning they're forced to individually attack into your arthur with every um guyber since their only choice is to end their churn and each guyber would die and your arthur wouldn't because he has 2000 defense and muse protects it from any damage that's less than its defense so uh, if unless they're hitting it for 20 it's not going to die so um that's how uh, arthur works and then of course yeah the last effect is his activate effect you tap him to give any card plus 800 defense any resonator anyway and um that actually plays two parts in this deck uh for one it of course pumps him and gets him rested so your opponent's forced into attack into him but um i side portal of truth in this deck uh just in case there's like a mirror match or anyone else is using any card like arthur and what i like about portal of truth is it says it destroys any card whose attack or defense is not equal to what its original attack and defense is so you can essentially and it's like this is like a, a dream situation it's probably not going to happen but it's kind of like a why not but you can tap arthur to give your opponent's card 800 defense and then just portal of truth it if you've sided into it so uh just in case your opponent does play something that's like really hard to get over or anything like that or they're you know being careful with how they're using their arthur because they know if they rest it with the plus eight effect you might portal of truth you can essentially just give it um defense yourself and then do something about it that way so um i think it's just a nice plus it's not it's not something that's going to be like game breaking or anything like that but um i don't i don't think it hurts so um that's something you could just keep your eyes open for too for the spell lineup i have four heavenly uh instrument hydromonica uh, this card is what I think makes this deck so good. At first, I didn't think this Regalia was that great, but it actually really, really is. So the first effect is to tap it, and you put the top card of your main deck on the bottom of your main deck. So because you can always check what the top card of your deck is, you can kind of control what you're drawing. So it's almost like having this is like having a really, really mini Morgania, and then having Morgania just makes it even better. So like, let's say if you have Cheshire and Green Cat in your hand, and the next card of your deck is Elvish Priest, but you kind of, you know, wish you had that first turn and you don't really want it now. And you put it on the bottom of your deck. And now the next card is Gwyber. You now have a Gwyber play. If you see an Arthur on top of your deck really early and you don't want it there until you stack it yourself, uh, you just put it on the bottom of your deck. So this this card just works in like so many good ways. It's, like I said, it kind of makes for like a mini reflect. It just lets you control what's going on top and what's going on the bottom uh, really, really easily. And then the second effect is you pay two and tap this card. And you can banish this card, uh, that's the cost, so you tap and banish it and you pay 2. Just search your main deck for a card and then shuffle your main deck and put that card on top. If your J-Ruler is uh, Songstress of Shangri-La or Xion uh, on the J-Ruler side, uh, you can play only one to play this ability, so they wanted it so that you can't splash this in every deck. So um, that's kind of how she does it just for one cost. But like I said, um, because they expected people to want to try to maybe use this in other decks, they put the two cost effect on it and it made it cost one less with Shion. But if you think about it, if you're playing against Primo or Barrier of Shadows and you have to pay two for this, it's still not that bad because that's what the regular cost is. And if you have to pay two to like stack your deck and then summon an Arthur, I'm totally fine with that. Like I'm, not, I'm really not too worried about having to pay more cost when the entire deck is like adam brolies and stuff that floats mana anyway i just think that this card's absolutely insane and like how i mentioned earlier where if you discard it you get to draw a card as long as you have another one on the field uh that's crazy because it sets off morgania and if you don't think you're going to need another one it just makes it really really good uh i have three sign of the future in this deck as well i had three in gills and i also have three in here um sometimes getting muse arthur and shion on the field means you technically only have two resonators and if your opponent tries to flood their field to try to attack over like 
Um, sometimes people are prepared for the Muse, so they'll kill the Muse and then be able to tag with enough damage to actually kill Arthur. And that's actually happened quite a lot of times, especially if your opponent's using like Gwybers or something. Um, even if their Gwybers are dying in the, the kind of the backlash, it's still, you know, they're still getting rid of Arthur, which is not what you want. So um, in a situation where I'm not going for the Gwyber play, I feel really safe when I go Muse after I've Shion then Arthurd. So I technically only control two Resonators, so if they get five, um, they would be able to uh, kill it because essentially, I mean, I'd be able to side in the future them because they're attempting to kill Arthur like uh, they're on their following turn. So let's say uh, your opponent tries to go for like double Wyvern and then they have like a Morgiana, a Green Cat, and a Cheshire. That's five cards. And if you just have Shion, Muse, and Arthur, that means they have to do more than you and you can sign in the future. Uh, it works typically if you're sort of starting off a little slow too and your opponent's outpacing you. It works really good against aggro decks. Like if you have, let's say, just like a Cheshire and they have a field like Lancelot, Cthulhu, and they summon Persia, you can like block something with Cheshire on purpose just so they have three and you have zero and then sign in the future as well. I think this card is just really insane. The only thing, um, you have to be careful with is other decks that use cards like Refuge. Um, it does slow down this card and it completely cancels it. So um, I just think it's too important anyway, though. There isn't a lot of removal in blue, white, or green. And I thought that this this card I've been using in every single deck this week. And I just think it's absolutely insane. I'll probably also have it um, not in the Eudrasil deck, but it's going to be in the Alice Iris deck too. So I, I can't emphasize how like important I think this card is right now. And then two in Secluded Refuge. I also explained this in my Kaguya deck. This is one of the things I think actually makes this deck work again. Uh, when this card enters the field, you draw a card, so remember that does also set off Morgiana. Uh, when a spell or ability your opponent controls targets a J slash Resonator you control, you can banish this card to cancel that spell. This card stops Sign of the Future, this card stops uh, God Arts, it stops... It just stops everything. Like the, the, it, it protects your Gwybers and your Arthurs so well that even if they have to go out of their way to then like let's say Sukiyomi this with Kaguya and then try to kill your uh, Arthur or Gwyber the next turn, like you're just pushing for so much damage that it doesn't matter. Like if you if you Sukiyomi this and I let's say have a Gwyber on the field and next turn I can set up like Arthur and uh, Shion and unless I'm like you know I don't want to bait into like a a, a sign of the future but let's say i only had a guyver on the field because all my other small stuff died and they sukiyomi this and i attack for 12 next turn uh set up arthur j activate shion and put uh arthur in the field like i have a guyver arthur and a shion you can't sign of the future me because she doesn't count as a resonator and i only have two creatures on board and it's like sure like good luck trying to deal with both of these next turn you know it's just it sets up like, even when they destroy this, the mana they have to go out of their way to use to destroy this card still gives you, like, an additional turn for you to just keep going off. And if you can even set up another one next turn or uh, another card I, I have in here too, it just works really well. And I think that this card is just amazing. And then uh, one Barrier of Shadows. This is the last addition field I run. So Speaker of Creation's targets are two Winds Clear Refuge and Barrier of Shadows. Uh, I just think this card is really important mained. Um, you never want to go against the Regalia deck and not have a main deck answer. Uh, this card works specifically well too with Shion because if you play this card and then you use her God Art to slam into another J Ruler and they can't pay the one to gain Imperishable because of Barrier of Shadows, it's a really easy way to actually get rid of a J Ruler. And, or if you force their J Ruler to attack into Arthur and you have Barrier of Shadows and they can't technically pump to get rid of Arthur and then they also can't sack for Imperishable or even if they're forced to keep their mana open to sack for Imperishable but not get over Arthur then you're still killing you know their J Ruler by making them attack into Arthur it just works really really well and then one Foment of the World Tree uh, like I said this card is insane with Morgiana it's a good source of life heal as well because it heals 800 uh, which is kind of nice because of all the Moonshades uh, it lets you put as many cards from your hand in the bottom as you want and then you draw that many cards plus one so it replaces itself So if you put three cards away, you draw four if you put two cards away, you draw three uh, Because of course you're using this card so you're losing this card and the two cards in your hand and it just replaces all of them um, It's just an insane card. It lets you fix your hands if there is anything wrong with them Which already her regalia does so easily anyway, but it's just like a complete plus plus a life heal uh, it's really easy to use and I just I really love this card. I think this card has made green completely like just um, So just amazing. I, I can't emphasize how good this card is and then uh, this is one of the texts I have in here that I actually think is quite well. It's a uh, prison of the lunar lake uh, The it's a chance standby that says when your opponent plays an automatic ability of a resonator They control that was put in the field from a non field zone this turn uh, While you control a water magic stone you can cancel that ability and destroy this, uh, that resonator uh, what this means is it's a lot of confusing text. 
but pretty much what it means is if your opponent tries to use any automatic ability, which is of course an enter effect or um, an effect kind of like Ruke that triggers in the graveyard, um, the automatic abilities are either effects that say when this card enters or an enter effect that's bolded or an effect that requires a trigger. So like this card itself is an automatic ability, but it's not a resonator. This only specifically stops resonators, but a uh, chance standbys are automatic abilities because uh, they require you to meet a trigger requirement before they can activate. So um, same with Rukeg, it says when this card is sent to the graveyard, blah, 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 that's an automatic effect because it, it checks for some kind of uh, moment or a certain time. So anything that like checks for a trigger is an automatic ability. So uh, why I like this card is the same way I can set up Refuge by like, let's say, floating Elvish Priest, uh, using him to float green, and then let's say if you sack him or a green cat and a Cheshire for Adam Broly, and you float any other color, you can use the floating green from Elvish Priest and the color you floated to set this as a standby. And what this card does is because I, I mentioned that Sign in the Future is so important in this format, it's going to completely make your opponent think you're setting up Sign in the Future. So they're either really, really going to slow down or they're, or they're going to try to play around it, not knowing that this is what's actually waiting in, the, in, you know, in secret. And because I don't really like setting sign in the future unless I really have to, like if I have the mana open for it and I have no other play, I will. But I like keeping it in my hand as a secret instead. And uh, this card completely makes your opponent think you're setting a sign in the future, which you might be doing even if they see this game one. Game two, they're going to be completely freaking out if you sign, sign in the future them because they're going to think, oh my god, which one is it? And this card completely shuts down Adam Broly. It shuts down anything like Rukik if your opponent is searching for like a Susano. It stops Susano himself because he tries to destroy stuff. It's just a really good card that's almost like a third Wind Secluded Refuge, except it destroys the card. And it's actually why I was running four Deep Woods instead of the four Magic Stone of Moonshade. I wouldn't want four Moonshade because that's a lot of life to pay anyway. But it's really nice because it says you must have a Water Stone. The Deep Wood counts as water because it specifies this card is treated as a Water Magic Stone. And I think this card is just really strong. Like, uh, I didn't like it in Kaguya 1.0. Um, I haven't fully tested every version of the deck, which is probably coming sometime next week. But um, I didn't like that Kaguya Stealth Monsters always need Dark. And then you also always need water. And of course, Dark Depths gives you both. But um, I didn't want to rely on seeing the Dark Depths. But in this deck, because I am going to have the Deep Woods because you're going through the deck quite quickly. Uh, you don't really like particularly ramp. But I knew I'd be comfortable with having just that one requirement. Instead of the requirement both for that and the Dark Monsters like you would in a Kaguya deck. It just feels safe at having this at one. And then it just stops so many cards. I, I think this card's um, a really good one of in any deck that has water. And you're allowed to use some kind of ramp engine. Because uh, Adam Broly and Elvish Priest really help feed this card. I would never just set this as like a turn 2 play 4-2. Unless, like I said, like the same assignment in the future, I really don't have any other play. Which doesn't happen quite often. But um, it's not meant for that. It's meant for the sake of actually just uh, floating a bunch of free mana and using it for that. And using that almost as a, a means to protect Arthur or Gwyber. Because if you set this up and they somehow destroy Wind Secluded Refuge and go for like a better beer or any card like that that can destroy Gwyber or Arthur and you counter it with this, you're so safe and you shut down their plays so safely that just you're, you're going to turn around the game immediately. And that even glimpse of uh, Kaguya, no I'm kidding, uh, the glimpse of uh, chance that they had for like even half a second just was completely taken away from them and I really like the the fact that the card is able to do that and then I main one dream of Juliet um this suggestion in general how I even mentioned this in all my decks of how dream of Juliet's a really good counter to primogenitor because it could destroy the additions your opponent takes uh from you and it can also bounce the monster they take from you and put it back into your field because it flickers it uh the card specifies uh a remove target resonator in the game then put it into the owner's field so if your opponent does let's say take my arthur and a field spell and i have a speaker of creation on the field i can use speaker to destroy let's say the wind secluded refuge he took from me and then just flicker my um arthur back into my field and i completely just ruined his god art so that was completely his idea so i, I give him props for mentioning that i ne had never really thought about this card until he mentioned it so um heads up gilbert you know shout out to you for thinking of a really really good uh, tech card actually so because i do main the arthur um i feel really safe maining this card because that would be like the worst situation if he's able to take that from me uh, any Gil Lapis player, I mean, so um, I really feel like this card should at least be a one of in the deck because it's really hard to counter your own Gwyber. I don't have better viewers main in this deck because I only had six white and it's the three Moonshades and the three Gusting Skies and I don't run Feetsing in this deck so I can't kind of try to color fix with that as well. 
So I mentioned yesterday in my Lapis video that I don't like running a dual colored card unless I have at least seven in the mana pool. So even six wasn't going to cut it for me for the main. I had it sided, but I didn't like it in the main. So uh, I felt safer with having Dream of Juliet over like a better beer or something. For the side deck, I have one Sinbad. Uh, Sinbad's really good in a deck like Reflex because you can search it out whenever you want, and so I felt safe having it here. Uh, you could trigger any of its effects off by even just discarding Hydromonica or summoning a Cheshire. I mainly have it for destroying more additions if I have to, or the pump is actually really nice as well. There's a lot of games where I play with this kind of deck where I'm always wishing I had like just another like 600 to like 800 more damage. And the fact that um, Sinbad can pump for just drawing instead just feels really, really good. Uh, he's I would mainly only side him if I really want the addition hate, but there's a lot this card does in general. If you have him on the field and your opponent's also playing Alice World and they go like, let's say, summon Morgiana, attempt to summon Cheshire, you can just easily uh, discard Hydromonica to draw a card, replace that with his deal 300 effect and kill the Morgiana to completely shut down their play. There's just a lot Sinbad does and I just really like having him there. He's just a, a really underrated card. And then two more Heras. I explained when I showed off my Hera that um, I can get this whenever I want, but if I need more for a particular matchup, I like having them sighted. Uh, one Bedivere. Um, like I said, I don't want this main because of the color pool. I don't trust the two white. Uh, this is strictly just me. People might think I'm crazy, but like I literally will hit like four Deep Woods and then one Gusting Skies. Like that happens to me every single time. And I can like any any deck I play. It's not just like this deck. And so I don't want anyone to particularly worry that they're gonna have any trouble. It's just me. Like if I'm playing when I was playing Kaguya, the Stealth Kaguya deck. I would literally hit like four Dark Stones and then a Goose Ballesta before I saw my little red of the four Scorch Bales. So uh, I'm convinced that Force of Wolf for some reason hates me and they just don't want me to have the right color pool. So I'm really careful with my picks. Um, three Feet Sings, uh, just in case you do go against the Red Rush deck, even though Arthur is really good, this actually protects Arthur really well as well if you could stop it to prevent their biggest hitter. And let's say you don't have Muse maybe, but it also works really good against Persia because I've said this in every video, but. Uh, if you prevent damage from Persia and block it, uh, it also prevents the 500 it would do via the effect because its last known information was it was uh, prevented damage from. So I like having access to Feetsing in the side. It also kind of helps you catch up if you're going second, but um, I only particularly use it against Red Rush. And then um, this is kind of a different uh, feel to it too, but I have one Celestial Wing Seraph and one of Lucifer Sided. Uh, Celestial Wing Seraph is a really good card to put on top of your deck with Hydromonica, and then because then if you summon it with Shion, you also get Lucifer for free. That way, you don't really need the black for it anyway. Uh, the only reason I really have this in there is because if your opponent has a lot of stuff like Portal of Truth sided, or you can anticipate that they're going to just continuously be bouncing Arthur with like a Reflect, sometimes switching out the Arthur for Celestial Wing Seraph, uh, which is why she's actually here in the back anyway, um, is a lot better than having the Arthur, because uh, then that way. Your Lucifer can freely attack for 9 if they're bouncing the Celestial Wing Seraph. And then it's also scary for them to bounce the Celestial Wing Seraph because they might not know that you only play 1 and 1. So he might be worried or she might be worried that if you play the Celestial Wing Seraph, you're going to get another Lucifer and then they're going to just be really scared. And so I typically only put one of each, but the Lucifer feels really safe too because if you do play against a Reflect player and you're swinging for 9, if they bounce into your hand and you use the Moon Shades to summon them and just summon them the next turn, they still have to sack a card because Luc Lucifer makes your opponent banish a card. So it's not really that bad. And then on the off chance that you do somehow need life and um, it's going to be hard to pay for, this is like kind of not as important. But um, you can pay the black and moon cost by using two moon shades so that he life links and you heal 900 900. And then of course, every time Celestial Wing Seraph attacks, you gain 300 life for every angel. So you would gain uh, 600. So uh, I liked having these two on the side just as an option. Uh, it's mainly just against Reflect because Bouncing Arthur endlessly does get really annoying. And you don't want to like waste your wind secluded refuge on something like that when he's just going to get the counters back. So it felt better to have this on in the side as an option. Uh, one Valentina. Uh, this card is, at first I thought it was going to be really, really insane, but it's been kind of underwhelming, so I have it just at one in the side. It does work really good against stuff like Gwyver, but only, once again, if you've already set up some type of protection for her, because if you take their Gwyver or anything big and they just kill her, they get it back, which is kind of a bummer. But um, in a situation where you have Adam Broly too, sometimes it's nice to take their card and sack like a Cheshire and their card for Adam Broly. So she does have a lot of usages. I just felt as though having one in the side, if you felt like you needed some kind of like removal, that's not just destruction. 
Maybe for like an opponent using Arthur as well in like some kind of mirror match, you can take their Arthur and that way like Muse doesn't protect it, but uh, you have to be careful with Prison of the Lake and Secluded Refuge, those both would stop Valentina as well. So um, I don't think it's particularly bad, it's just not as good as I wish it was, but um, I like just having one in the side to be safe. And then once you saw no, um, I don't want to really care to have this main because like I said, everyone is now starting to protect Wyvern before playing it. But just on the off chance that you do feel as though you want to push your damage or your opponent's playing something like Sylvia, uh, you can of course side this in and then put it on top of your deck and just draw into it whenever you want. Uh, it feels really good in general, so I, I wanted to have access to it if I needed it. Uh, one glimpse of Kaguya for the Primogenitor matchup. Um, it works just it works really good against his Goddard. Um, it's just there to counter it. If you see it, you see it. If not, just use Dream of Julia to kind of counter it. I just liked having the option there. Uh, one Realm of Pure Spirits. Uh, this generally works really good with Muse and Valentina. If they can't target them and can't destroy them, they can't get their stuff back, and they also can't stop Muse from protecting Arthur. But with Tsukiyomi being so live, I didn't want to main this. I felt a lot better just having it in the side. And then two Portal of Truths just to kill what I mentioned earlier. Uh, if you pump anything with Arthur, you can get rid of it. If your opponent's also using an Arthur, you can get rid of that as well. It just works really good against a lot of decks right now that do have a lot of pumps. And so I like having it as an option as like almost like a green stoning. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you guys did like the deck profile. This is truly what I believe the most com uh, competitive version of Shion could be as of the moment unless somebody thinks there's something even greater which would be awesome. I'm really excited to see what other people come up with there because she is a really interesting ruler. I really hope it didn't bother anyone of how close this was to the Kaguya list. Uh, I was talking to someone else, um, a lot of people actually about how, uh, what kind of uh, motive I was going to use to make this deck and what kind of like direction I was going to take with it. But um, I had so many different ideas, but this was my original version of it that I saw myself do so well because me and my friend just got top two. So um, even though it's just a small local event, I mean, it, it's some kind of practice, whereas I had none with any other version. And like I said, if I'm going to put Cheshires in the deck, I really want to have practice with them because if anyone picks up the deck, I feel really bad if they spend the money. So um, yeah, I hope you guys are okay with that. And if you do have any questions or suggestions, uh, make sure to leave it in the comment section below where I'll respond as soon as I can. And if you guys haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do because I have a ton of more videos coming out really soon. Eudrasio will be tomorrow and Alisiris will be Friday. And then I'm probably going to be re revamping uh, Kaguya 1.0, the stealth version, uh, really soon, uh, most likely next week. And then I have some other ideas too, and eventually I'll catch up with the story and stuff as well. And I'll definitely catch you guys next time.